If you enter this gate, you might feel like you were in another age, for the sound of cars had subsided. Look at the pavilion of a stele and the royal tomb of King Taejong Muyeol. The tomb mound shone like a green jewel among the dark green pine trees. The bent and twisted pine trees may regard twisting rather than straight as their virtue. There are four large tombs in a row above this royal tomb and two medium-sized tombs below. They are all in a straight line. However, the tomb compound was divided into two when the Japanese built a road across it in the colonial period. The uphill road to the side of the barrows seems to call us. The royal tomb looks like a jewel behind any trees. It is as if no matter how dark the days are, the history of King Muyel seems to shine. Let's take a look at the four large tombs above first, considering that the tomb of King Muyel stands below. You can agree that they might be his ancestors' tombs, though ignorant of whose graves they are. Chusa Kim Jong-hee, who visited Gyeongju, said they would be royal tombs. It is just a guess referring only to the sizes of those tombs. King Muyeol was the 29th king of Silla and reigned from 651 to 661. Except for this 10-year reign, he was neither a king nor a crown prince. He was just a lawyer courtier. As he was elected to be a king at the conference of Hwabek later in his life, he was better known by the name Kim Chunchu. Because he dedicated himself to the unification of the three kingdoms for his life, in a word, he saved Silla from many crises. He deserved to ascend the throne. A small, long, and smooth hill begins. Any tomb was not built here because of the rock underneath. As the hill becomes simpler, it may look like an abstract painting. Kim Chun Chu's royal family tree was as sure as these tombs in a straight line. When the 21st King Jin Hung died, his second son ascended the throne since his eldest son had already died. He was King Jinji. However, the nobles deposed him due to his dissipation. That is why his son Kim Yong Chun couldn't succeed on the throne. Instead, his dead elder brother's son ascended the throne to become King Jinpyeong, the 26th king. Kim Chun Chu's father, Kim Yong Chun, for some unknown reason was classified as Jingol nobility, which means that he was excluded from the priorities of the succession to the throne. King Jinpyeong probably strongly opposed handing over the throne to his cousin Kim Yong Chun's family. He alleged that his family is of a Songol nobility and his cousin's status is of Jingol nobility. That's why his daughter and niece, Queen Sundok and Queen Jindok, were entitled to become queens. If the two queens had had sons, they would have succeeded on the throne. According to Hwarang Segi, Queen Sundok wanted to have sons, so he attracted three noblemen to bed, but had no child. It is well known that Kim Chun Chu had extraordinary ambition, loyalty, and resourcefulness. He made Kim Yushin, a descendant of Gaya kings, his blood ally in many senses. Silla completed the unification of the three kingdoms during the reign of King Munmu, the 30th king. Kim Chun Chu made the unification possible in his life. Although he substantially unified the three kingdoms with the help of the Tang dynasty, 
You may agree that he created the first unified state on the Korean peninsula. The first unified state, Silla, made a foundation of the identity and the sovereignty of the Korean people. He prepared for the next stage of developing their country into a stronger one. The grass of this royal tomb is silky. The curve of the tomb is also smooth. The curve has no protrusion at all. Some said that Kim Chun Chu's personality was like that. According to Nihon Shoki or the Chronicles of Japan, he was handsome and had a great chat. The fact that he signed the agreement of the military alliance with Emperor Taizong of Tang could have also been ascribed to his generous character, like this Mount Ritchie. He and Kim Yushin were faithful to each other, building friendships like fraternities since they were young. He was his friend, brother-in-law, father-in-law, and king. Kim Chun Chu regarded Baek Jae as an arch enemy. It is because his daughter and her husband were murdered by two traitors in 642 when their castle fell. He was so grievous that he proposed a military alliance with Goguryeo and Tang to collapse Baek Jae, but they rejected it. You may think his revenge on Baek Jae was a private aim of the unification wars. It was in 648 that he visited the Tang in person and negotiated with it. In the end, he succeeded in signing a military alliance agreement. He left his son in Tang as a sign of his pledge. In May 660, he finally attacked Baek Jae with an army of 50,000 elite soldiers with Crown Prince and General Kim Yushin. On July 13th, he eventually conquered the capture of Baek Jae with a troop of 130,000 tank military. At the official surrender ceremony on August 2nd, he received a glass of wine which King Uija of Baekje offered as a sign of surrender, kneeling on the floor. Kim Chun Chu did not treat even the enemy king cruelly. He even gave his government post to Baekje nobles and treated the refugees humanely. But he didn't forget the two traitors who brought his daughter and her husband to murder. He captured and killed them mercilessly. He died in June 661 at 59, seven years before Silla conquered Goguryeo and completed the unification. There is the front of the tomb. Can you see the tips of the stones around the bottom of the tomb? They are stones embedded to prevent soil from flowing down. Historians presume that the tomb structure isn't the style of a wooden coffin covered with a pebble mound, but that of a stone chamber with the entrance tunnel. There's no tomb whose buried person is as clear as this tomb because the name of the buried person, King Taejong Muyeol, is inscribed on the monument over there. Here is the monument. It is a pity, however, that the main body of the monument on which they inscribed what King Muyeol achieved has been missing. Nevertheless, it is fortunate that the head and base of the stele remain like this. Look at this base. Isn't this a living turtle? An excellent work of art, a great piece of realistic sculpture. You will find that the artist harmoniously added the various patterns to the animals to heighten their artistry. It is designated as a national treasure of Korea. You can find the quadruple hexagonal turtle patterns easily. They carved great painter patterns.
Around the epitaph's bottom, dozens of large petals gather to form the large palmate patterns. Each petal also contains a typical palmate patterns in it. Look at the patterns beneath the turtle's chin. It is also a variation of the palmate. A stem emerges from one palmate to form a second palmate. Likewise, on the top and side of the turtle's neck, one palmate has a branch from which comes the second tier of the palmate. Though the patterns on the edge of the shell are also palmate, the stems grow long to look like cloud patterns. Now look at these dragons coiling around the inscription. In the center, there are eight embossed characters, Taejong Muyeol Dewang GB, in two lines in the seal type of Chinese characters. They are said to have been written by Kim In Mun, King Muyeol's son. Six dragons are carved on the head of the stele. If you look from the side, the dragon heads are stuck uniformly in the ground, as if in a case. Every single scale is alive. The manes are stiff from the head to the body. The arms and legs are come out of the body have two elbows. Look at the hands or feet, which hold a kintamani. What is unusual is that there are cloud patterns on these legs. Does it mean that the dragons freely fly, brushing against the crowd? It is the first two monuments created under the influence of the Tang Dynasty in Korea. But as there are no more works of art as excellent as this one in Korea and China, you may be slightly surprised. The Gyeongju National Museum has just one fragment of the body part. Here are some old photos of the colonial period, deserted stele and tomb. Back out of the gate, the rushing cars sound like the passing sound of the history. Since a great historical figure like Kim Chun Chu had gone many centuries ago, it seems that we don't have such a great hero in these challenging times.